Good evening. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Manushka Mishra, your host for the subject of semi solid preparations as well as the preparation of suppositories. We have bring some of the questions for you and its solutions. Uh, let us see what are the different type of multi choice questions been put forward by GPAT as, as well as other uh, examinations bodies, examining bodies and the answers of it. Let us see. Let us begin with the first question that is a viscous emulsions of semi solid consistency intended for the application to the skin. You see viscous emulsions of semi solid, semi solid preparations with viscous emulsions intended for the application to the skin. Let us see the answer. Its, its answer is cream. Why the cream is the answer? Why the ointments or paste or the gels are not the answer? Because cream has its own definition. Let us see in the next slide. Yes, you see ointments. Ointment as, the, as per the definition being given yesterday in the previous class that they are the semi solid greasy preparations you see. I have to put some of the marks right here. Let us see. Semi solid, these are the se semi solid greasy preparations contains a medicament suspended or emulsified. As per the definition of ointment, previously already been discussed that ointment are the semi solid preparations, those who are intended to be applied or on the skin surface, and apart from the drug, they have the other medicaments which are suspended or emulsified in the ointment base. Already it was been discussed earlier that the ointment contains a drug and in the non-drug part. The non-drug part is nothing but the base, inert base and it is the ointment base. Ointment bases are of different types, we will discuss later on, already discussed earlier in the classes. But are these are the uh, different type of queries and the multiple choice questions, we will dis discuss a little bit about it. So, ointments, these are the semi solid greasy preparations, contains medicaments suspended or emulsified in the ointment base. What about creams? If we we'll discuss about creams, let us see, these are the viscous emulsions of semi solid consistent intended for the application to the skin. Yes, the answer what we have put forward in the question, the answer itself is there that the creams is the viscous emulsions of semi solid. So, the, what was the previous question we are putting forward? Let us see. What we put forward? We are discussing that viscous, our question is that what are the viscous preparations? Yes, you see, whenever we are talking about viscous emulsions of semi solid preparations, the answer itself is cream because as per the definition is concerned, cream has the Viscous emulsion, you see, in this case, cream viscous emulsions of semi solid consistency. But in other cases, like in case of ointment, we will discuss about paste, we are discussing about gels, they have different type of definitions, that is why creams is the answer. Cream, once again, we are discussing, let us see what is the cream. Cream is nothing but these are the viscous emulsions. You see viscous emulsion of semi solid consistency intended for application to the skin surface. Clear? So, let us discuss with the next question. Yes, aqueous cream are which type of emulsion? The question what is listen to the question before answering, whenever some of the questions are puzzling, because you might be thinking that this answer is correct, that answer is correct. We have uh, number of thoughts comes in mind. But be repeat the question twice at least, so that you can understand what the exact uh, concept is there, what is the question, the questionnaire put forward before you. Once you understand the question very clearly, you can answer very clearly with the correct foundation and fundamentals is clear. So, let us see in this second question, what happened, what is the question been asked forward before us that what is the aqueous cream, aqueous cream. Whether aqueous cream is a O by W type or W by O type. So, let us see what is the answer and why is the answer. Yes, the answer is W by O, that is water in oil type. Why this is the answer? Let us see. We have the explanation before you why this is the answer, why others are not the answer. Because cold cream already been discussed earlier, cold cream is nothing but the W by O, water in oil, water is the dispersed phase and oil 
is the dispersion medium or continuous phase. So, in prominent amount what is the available? Oil is available as the continuous phase and in cold cream you see water is very less amount available and it is the dispersed phase. So, but in vanishing cream also you see it is O by W type oil in water, but you see cleansing cream basically these are the cleansing cream and cold creams. So, that is why as before we discussed cold cream itself is you see cold cream being discussed earlier that cold cream it is nothing but the W by O type of emulsion. So, that is why whenever talking about sunscreen creams it is O by W type emulsions zinc oxide and titanium dioxide is most effective sunscreen preparations. So, that is why whatever the questions we put forward before us earlier you see once again you just understand that what is aqueous you see aqueous cream what is aqueous cream or which type of emulsion aqueous cream as per the name itself is there it is completely answer is W by O type because you see aqueous cream O by W type of emulsion this is aqueous cream and sometimes it is also one type of aqueous aqueous means what aqueous means where water is uh, is uh, used as the major continuous phase aqueous water soluble means whenever water is your major portion at the continuous phase on those cases you can tell that yes these are the creams with water or aqueous phase whenever this is non we are talking about non aqueous phase then we come to the uh, about uh, talks about cold creams then ok. These are W by O type of emulsions, but in this case these are the O by W type of emulsions. Next question let us see ointment bases are generally classified by the USP into what type of groups. In previous class we have already discussed about it that ointment bases are classified into four subgroups. What are they? Let us see yes answer itself is four and what are they already? Yes you see these are classified into oleaginous bases or hydrocarbon bases you see in previous classes also I have discussed about the different type of ointment bases yes first one is the oleaginous base first one second two absorption base third one water removal or water soluble bases and yes water soluble in this case water miscible bases and water soluble bases four types of bases are there oleaginous base already discussed these are the known as the hydrocarbon bases absorption bases you see oleaginous base what I told about oleaginous bases oleaginous bases are nothing but these are the hydrocarbon bases or oily bases without any content of water in it and at the same time these are mostly W by O type emulsions and absorption bases they have the property to absorb more and more water content but do not lose its property of oil structure ok oil properties there in case of absorption bases although they can absorb uh, more amount of water, but water uh, you see water removal bases these these are easily these are also known as water soluble bases you know water washable water washable bases very easily they are washed or washable yes these are also known as water removal or water washable bases because these bases can be removed very easily by using water that is why the name is there water removal or water washable bases and lastly water soluble bases these bases are very easily solubilized uh, in water getting it. Next question let us see yes uh, which of the following method is used in the preparation of ointment except because you see uh, uh, the question itself is very easy that which of the following methods is used for the preparation of ointment what are the methods for the preparation of ointment there are four methods are there are among which only trituration me method is the answer yes trituration method and what how does it works let us see yes you see there are four methods are there first one trituration number two fusion chemical reaction and emulsification methods there are four methods are broadly uh, are there for the preparation of ointment. So, first one you see trituration whenever we are talking about trituration method what trituration method in this case you see uh, you have taken the ointment drug powder you have to take 
the ointment based sesukin you take a slab ointment slab this is known as ointment slab where you have to take the suppose these are the oil uh, that is the ointment drugs these are the drug parts these are nothing but the drugs and you have in another sections you have different type of bases let us see this is the ointment bases ointment bases so in trituration method what you have to do you have to take some portion a little bit portion suppose i have to change a little bit color so that you can understand very easily yes you have to yes you have to take some portion of it yes and some portion of drug is taken both of them comes together they are mixed again to give a little bit same means slowly slowly you have to take some amount of drug some amount of ointment bases are comes and they mix together triturate together mix properly uh, then after that until all the ointment bases as well as the drugs are mixed properly means it is it is not a continuous process but a slow process you have to take some part of a and some part suppose if it is a, a and this is b you have to take some amount of a and you have to take some amount of b mix properly uniformly until a smooth preparation is obtained after that you take another amount of phase rest amount of b slowly slowly this process going on until all a and b are completed and you triturate it properly mix it properly so that there should not be any type of gritty particles and uniform preparation a smooth consistent uh, ointment is prepared that is the trituration method is all about and what about the other methods fusion method in fusion method you have to uh, take the highest temperature and slowly the temperature reduced and at temperature suppose you have taken a b c suppose three products you have taken three chemicals a gets melted at 50 degree celsius b at 95 degree celsius and let's see which 25 degree celsius so you have to do what you have to do in fusion method is that you have to increase the temperature up to 95 degree celsius first you put b and raise the temperature up to 95 degree celsius so that b is mixed now now slowly uh, you have to reduce the temperature slowly you have to decrease the temperature and when the temperature is reduced up to 50 degree celsius you are a and when the temperature reduced up to 25 degree celsius you are c so by this process what happened it is completely get fused fusion means all the preparation get fused and in a descending way of reducing our reduction of temperatures you have not to mix over heating the products if you start from the lower to bottom in a increasing order what happened overheating is possible because you have started your temperature at 25 degree celsius then again you are increasing up to 35 then again you are increasing to 95 what will happen the 25 and 35 degree celsius those products those uh, parts are again overheated so that's why you should not liking because nobody is liking that overheating any product is there so by which the chemical reactions may be changed and physical structure might get changed and so might be creating lots of problem for us that's why we are not looking for such type of preparations for overheating of anything is done okay so that's why we have to start it with the uh, from the highest temperature to lower temperature so by this this uh, fusion process is all about then chemical reaction there is the reactions between two products have to get the ointment and emulsification that is one one of the o by w and w type of uh, preparation with some of the using of emulsifying agents okay so your answer is there already yes you see free from lumps and separator yes some of the again some little bit discussions i have to made again let us see what are they yes you see you see free from lumps and separated the high melting ingredients of the base free from lumps yes free from lumps of separated high melting point ingredients of the base no tendency of separation of liquid constituents from the bulk even distribution of yes what is we are looking forward in our know, preparing in ointment what we are looking that we need that uh, water if some of the liquid portion is there along with the solid portion the liquid should not be stand out 
it should be a uniform product suppose after uh, keeping our round men for a little bit time openly what happens you say you are finding some of the products we are finding we are using some of the uh, preparations and we are finding the liquid part is coming out of it and the solid part is rest kept uh, aside so means by that the product is not proper the product needs to be mixed properly giving a proper shape and that cannot be you know physical separation or all this type of uh, incompatibility or chemical incompatibility should not be there so that's why our look should be very clear that any type of lumps or grittiness should not be there in ornaments because whenever we are using this preparations on the skin surface it feels grittiness is there and little bit irritations and allergy conditions may be there so that's why each product must be smooth enough to the skin surface should not have any type of lumps present in it the liquid parts should not be stand out rather they are uh, mixed together properly to give a proper look and elegant look so that uh, the patient is getting uh, accepted accepting the product at the same time the product has is the better therapeutic value yes grittiness it is there even distribution of insoluble yes insoluble some of the powders are there which are not properly mixed you have to mix uh, in such a way so that the powders are mixed uniformly throughout the uh, preparations to obtain uniform ointment yes to obtain an uniform ointment you have to put all these parameters into consideration so that a very nice looking elegant smooth uh, free from grittiness uh, ointment should be produced to before the patients for better patient acceptance yes next question which is the example which is the example of polygenous species yes already you have discussed the spectral atom in previous class you have if you have gone through my class previously you must be knowing that petrol atom is nothing but the polygenous species or the hydrocarbon species because we have discussing that the major example of polygenous species is the petrol atom or petroleum products yes yes you, you see petrol atom next to that it is yes see what are the things there how it can distinguish and significantly let us see yes original base the name itself is there original base here yeah, these are occlusive properties that they are hydrophobic occlusive giving a protective layer hydrophobic water insoluble because already i have discussed earlier that these are completely oil based products or bases without any type of water no water is present in case of original bases but rather completely water is present only in this case oil is present so excuse me so these are greasy and non washable you cannot remove this type of uh, these oils from your skin surface easily by using water and these are hydrophobic in nature means no presence of water and you cannot wash it by water they produce a viscous layer a thick layer a greasy layer over your skin surface occlusive in nature protective in nature yes then various examples are there white petroleum products white ointments next to that absorption bases occlusive is there water bases are absorbent anhydrous and greasy but yes i have already discussed that absorption bases are nothing they have keep their property of oily structure oily nature uh, that same to that of oligenous bases that uh, property is there it retains its property but one thing is that they can absorb water and after absorbing our water also it do not change its physical properties okay next to that w by o type emulsifying as bases you see lanolin cold creams w by o type water is the dispersed phase oil is the continuous phase but reverse is in this case o by w oil is the dispersed phase and water is the this uh, well of this uh, continuous phase in larger amount availability what is present and better example is your hydrophilic ointment vanishing cream all those that comes under it and these are very easily washed out by using of water because water itself is the continuous phase so by application of water you can easily remove this type of preparations or ointments from your skin surface lastly water soluble bases water soluble Uh, these uh, water soluble washable these are very easily washable non greasy yes obviously because completely water is present non occlusive must yes once it is do because it do not contain any type of oil content in it so that's why non occlusive it do not provide any type of coating lipid free yes then peg polyethylene glycol ointments next to that 
yes the rate limiting barrier in the tropical formations yes we know it whenever already in the first class whenever discussing about ointment it is very clear that whenever we are applying what is ointment ointment are the semi solid preparations which contain medicaments which are dispersed or emulsified in suitable ointment basis and these are applied topically to the skin surface and we know it that skin have five layers sub layers are there three sub layers are there and five layers initially so we have to crush the ointment has to crush the barriers of the skin and the major barrier is nothing but the stratum corneum stratum corneum means the the drug has to pass the ointment has to pass through the stratum corneum to get penetrated into the and to get uh, distributed into the blood stream we have to pass that skin surface that is the stratum corneum yes you see stratum corneum now how and why let us discuss yes the stratum corneum is the outermost skin layer that is uh, conified that the rate limiting step preventing dermal drug penetration in other words the rate at which a drug diffuses across the stratum corneum determines its overall rate of dermal penetration and formation yes means by that as we know that the skin that is the stratum corneum upper layer outer layer rather uh, because the outer layer is the stratum corneum and the drug or the ointment we are applying on it it had it has to cross through that layer that is stratum corneum uh, irrespective to get uh, absorbed means uh, once it has to get absorbed right there and for, for further distribution water is there uh, sorry blood is there but we have to the thing is that what we have to do at which a drug has to diffuse first of all the drug has to diffuse into the stratum corneum pass through the stratum corneum and after that gets penetrated or permeated into the blood stream to get absorbed yes means by that if you will draw a structure you see suppose this is the layer and this is the drug yes this is the drug yes this is the drug suppose this is the drug Yes, suppose this is the drug, the drug has to penetrate, the drug has to penetrate through the stratum corneum, this is the stratum corneum, the drug has to pass through the stratum corneum irrespective to get absorbed by the various you see, suppose these are the capillary networks you have, capillary networks, yes. The our body consists of various uh, blood connecting capillary networks, capillary tubes. But it, once what we have to do, the drug has to penetrate through the stratum corneum to get distributed by use of blood, uh, drug, uh, blood. By the using of blood, the drug will be distributed. But the thing must be very clear that the drug is completely get absorbed or penetrated or permeated through the stratum corneum. Okay. Now the stratum corneum is the that's why it is the rate limiting barrier because uh, it depends upon the skin what type of skin you have if you are a healthy person if uh, whether the patient itself is a small kid or a newborn baby or a geriatric persons so depending upon the thickness of the stratum corneum the barrier value that rate of penetration might be different because everybody's skin surface is not uniform also the skin might have some you have suffering from some of the diseases skin condition or ph may not be same some of the differs may be there so that's why it is very much vital that the stratum corneum is the major obstacle before the uh, before the reaching of drug because that's why what happened you see whenever you are taking any oral formulation suppose it's related to be a tablet or a capsule then you are, you are taking it orally with the consumption of liquid of water and it will pass through the GI tract and gets absorbed by the uh, small intestine due to presence of larger amount of microvilli. You see with the larger surface area that is one of the root of drug administration. 
but other word is topical root topical root although it is a good thing and these are applied superficially topically on the skin surface but the thing is that it has to first of all you have to apply that much amount of drug uh, so that it can be easily get penetrated into the uh, through the skin and uh, gets distributed by using of uh, blood so that part has to be taken care and that's why I think uh, whenever we do ointment, we ointment instead of ointment you have other options but, but some of the persons having some fungal infections some of the persons having some other infections and they need that treatment badly topical treatment of ointment is that was vital you see already this figure if you look at the figure right here yes you, you can see topical formulations been applied over the skin surface and suppose this is the stratum corneum already been discussed right there if it is the stratum corneum it has to penetrate and get absorbed by the, there is the blood capillaries this is there right there it is remarked right there that is the blood capillaries and blood capillaries is uptake it will uptake the drug from the uh, blood stream into the target area next to that what the question is there the question is that generally paste you see paste we have number of preparations with us but already been discussed that what is a paste paste is nothing but this is semi solid preparations with a larger content of insoluble solids you see that is yes what general paste contains already high percentage of insoluble solids that answer is correct and why it is correct let us discuss with the reasons behind it yes you see Paste. As for the definition of paste, paste is nothing but these are the very thick and stiff contains high percentage above 50 percent of insoluble solids. What type of solid? Insoluble. The, you see the semi solid preparations that is ok. It contains insoluble solids. Those are not solubilized in that particular base. We have taken the base, we have taken the drug, but the drug is completely insoluble with the base. So you have to mix it. And what amount of base uh, solids are there? More than 50 percent of the total amount, more than 50 percent of solids are there. And the solids itself is uh, not that much, uh, it is completely insoluble and stiff in nature. Stiff means thick because you see uh, what amount of preparation you have taken, you have taken the base, you are adding that uh, solids those are uh, not soluble insoluble solids and more than 50 percent above until you can say larger amount is the solids are there insoluble solids are present and you have to get mixed it they are not mixed properly you are mixing but they are not going to solubilize and obviously with the so much larger amount of this uh, insoluble solids what happen the preparation gets stiff and thick paste is less greasy because yes because they do not contain any oil portions that is why they are less greasy they are porous so that uh, perspiration sweat can escape through it yes porous means by that what there is a gaps are there you see suppose I am drawing the figure suppose this is the preparation and you see in this figure so I will have to little bit draw a little bit differently so that you can understand yes suppose these are this is the preparation and these are what these are the insoluble solids so by that in between there are gaps are there yes here is the gaps here is the gaps here is the gaps so that gaps is able to permit the passage of perspiration through the skin that that level passes easy for the perspiration to pass through they are porous means they have the type of porous in nature and as well as so that perspiration or nothing but the sweat can easily pass through. So that is whenever we are using a paste in our body what when there will be lots of sweat looking out coming out of it because the, due to its porous nature it can easily permit the water to come out from the skin surface to the outer surface. Yes next question which of the following is evaluation parameter of semi solid except so you see in semi solid preparations we have number of uh, parameters we are checking but the major parameter is the skin irritation test you see which of the following is evaluation parameter of semi solid except so you see yes 
in this case no disintegration test is you see so all of them that which of the following is evaluation parameter yes the drug content is the evaluation parameter spreadability the evaluation parameter skin irritation study is also in the evaluation parameter but yes disintegration test is not there with ointment preparations because these are not the solid preparations but disintegration test is there in case of tablets and capsules because these are the unit solid doses form but are uh, these are the semi solid preparations ointments so that's why you have to conduct that drug content study drug content spreadability is determined and skin irritation study has to be checked but disintegration test is not there in case of ointments why yes because we have already gone through this evaluation parameter what are the different parameter appearance is there yes you see appearance is there and appearance for various type of um, evaluation studies like grittiness we are looking forward we are greasiness is there stickiness is there smoothness stiffness all these are the, uh, taken care viscosity we have already conducted it by using bisqueel propyl viscometer drug content is determined in pharmacopel assay procedure we have hmm, then the yeah, drug diffusion study drug diffusion why we are studying by using drug diffusion can be studied by using kesari chain cell or by using franz diffusion cell okay yes franz diffusion cell or kesari kesari chain cell then skin irritation test animal models i have already discussed that we have to remove the skin surface where this uh, skin irritation test has to be conducted you have to remove by using hair remover uh, then you have to apply the prepared uh preparation that ointment and fix it properly for and we will observe for one week what type of uh, changes in its body that whether that infection is uh, there or not there erythema is developing or not developing redness is there in the skin surface or not there we will time to time we will check it and once we conclude that nothing is there that's very nice that preparation passes the skin irritation test and if some of the redness is there it is very clear that reaction is there skin irritation is there so that is can be conducted over the rat mod, uh, that is animals that is rabbits are majorly been treated once uh, you can also use rats also eye irritation test for ophthalmic preparations this uh, eye irritation test is conducted on animal models because you see whenever we are going for any type of preparation we cannot go to the humans directly to we cannot uh, trial it on the humans or animals first of all we have to go on to the animals let it start with the rat or mice then we'll go to then go to the rabbit then to other animals then human volunteers for clinical trial and if it is okay right there then we can opt we go to the uh, directly to the human bodies or patients directly so different type of studies parameters has to be conducted different phases are there for the evaluation of the preparations so for ointment uh, that is ophthalmic preparation as you see ophthalmic is directly to be installed or applied to the eye it has to be installed into the eye or applied to the conjunctival sac so that's why this preparations are very sensitive because eye is very sensitive organ of our body we have to take care of it very carefully that's why before exploring or before going venturing into very stuff of experimental study experimental study on our skin, uh, eyes we have to be very most cautious and the trial has to be conducted on various type of animals and human volunteers before uh, drawing any type of conclusion over it then spreadability yes already been discussed earlier that we have to place the gel in between two slides and we have to put force or weight over uh, the slide so that let us see at what pressure at what body weight the slide start moving that has to be calculated and taken care so that's why so one that we study you see in all the studies all the evolution parameters we are not finding any type of disintegration test
yes disintegration test is not there disintegration test is conducted only in case of tablet capsules all these uh, semi solid osseous forms were conducting disintegration test and this test is not been conducted in case of semi solid preparations like ointments or gels next question which of the following is a penetration enhancement method except penetration enhancement method various methods were adopted in previous classes already i have discussed in various methods were adopting uh, to get any type of better penetration rate of penetration because already in this initial slides of discuss that stratum corneum is the major barrier or rate limiting step in our semi solid preparations for any type of semi solid preparations to be successful it has to be get penetrated or permeated into the skin better or faster then we can say that our product is very good it will work very good it is working very quickly and gives a efficient result if it is if it is the absorption itself is delayed if the penetration itself is delayed then obviously the result will take lots of time hours or days and by that time also because we cannot apply ointment over our skin surface and just keep standing or sitting quietly without any type of work we have to go outside we have to work with uh, some of the work in the kitchen we have to using different type of uh, products so we time to time a lot of us are there and we have to use our hands or legs so we cannot suppose we have to go outside and uh, we have some of the infections on the skin surface back side or uh, we have to apply it then we cannot uh, open and so that lots of time we can we have to wear clothes we have to go outside lots of boxes there so that's why the utmost need is that the drug has to be penetrated faster the permission rate must be faster so that's why for to, for the success of this permission rate we have adopted different or various type of other other different type of uh, uh, formulas and different type of uh, substitutes enhancement procedures or what are they which one is not there yes addition of surfactant is not one of the method for the penetration enhancement why already you see different type of penetration enhancement methods are there already discussed in the previous class if you have gone through the previous class slides you must be finding that yes we have different methods and among which drug modification like pro drugs iron pair coarserbates eutectic mixture so these are one of the method then vehicle modifications by vehicle method modification liposomes nanoparticles nano emulsion preparations are there you see drug modification is there then vehicle level modification is there then stratum corneum modification how to change the stratum corneum by hydration and using a paxlovid is there uh, stratum corneum bypass not gone through the not to pass the product uh, through the stratum corneum rather we are changing it completely by using micro needle uh, ablation and follicular and delivery modification is also there one of the method by using ultrasound antiphoresis electro uh, poresion and magneto poresis so th some of the methods are there but that method we are looking forward that what method we previously discussing addition of surfactant is none of one of the method addition of surfactant is not one of the method to get the enhancement uh, methods next slide so the term suppository is derived from the latin suppositories meaning what yes to place under the latin meaning of suppository is to place under let us see yes it is yes see what is the definition of suppositories let us see yes suppositories are the overdal or conical medicated solids intended for insertion into several orifices of the body you see suppositories are the semi solid preparations they are intended to get inserted into various body cavities except mouth what for they are applied they have a specific uh, use that they are applied on such uh, uh, organelles or such orifices where they are uh, that is direct you can this you see by orally you are taking you can use uh, you can take uh, tablet you can take capsules you can go for various type of liquid preparations but semi solid preparations you are not supposed to take uh, you are not going to take ointment 
through oral route. Like that, you cannot take suppositories through the oral route, but rather in dependable orifices like vaginal route, through rectum, uh, through nasal bogies, through uh, you see you can say ears. So, different dental cones. So, there are other options are there where you have some of the holes are there and that has to be the drug has to be directly implemented or used on that target site. So, that the instant drug list is there. What is the motto of using different, different type of suppositories? stories? They have the intention that whenever they are applied to that specific orifice or um, body part that gets melted at the body temperature. So, means by that instant release of drug to that specific part. So, by that local and as well as systemic uh, therapeutic effect will be done instantly. You see, if you take the drug orally, it will take, you have, it has to pass through the GI tract, it has to pass through the phosphorus metabolism and get absorbed and then only it will provide the needful medication. But in this case, what happened? You are putting the drug to that specific part where you have some infection or some of the issues. So, means by that it will directly produce the result right there by gets resolved and immediately absorption rate will be faster, much more faster. And you are also avoiding the fast pass metabolism where most of the drugs gets deteriorated. The rate of absorption rate is completely reduced in case of oral drugs where the drugs are gets uh, metabolized by or removed by your fast pass metabolism. So, you are preventing that parameter. No gastric irritation will be there. No gastric irritation will be there whenever you are using suppositories. So, that is why we have to adopt this one. Yes, see. So, these are the definition of suppositories and the suppository term derived from the Latin suppositus, meaning to place under. From this Latin term, our get we are getting the result that yes, suppose nothing, but rather a devices are derived, it is derived from the Latin term why would means to place under. So, this generally intended to use in the rectum, already discussed vaginal and to a lesser extent to the urethral and local for local and systemic effects or action. Next question, which of the following is emulsifying base used in suppository except? You see, there are lots of you see, massa, astronum, then white of cell, mushopol. All these mostly are the bases, but uh, cocoa butter may not be there. Yes, cocoa butter is not there. Cocoa butter is a part of ointment only, but this is not been used in case of suppositories. Why? Yes, now you see. We have to discuss a little bit regarding this also. Yes, suppository bases, oligosinous or fatty bases, cocoa butter, trioboma oil, synthetic fats, hydrogenated palm, kernel oil. So, these are the oligosinous bases we are using, aqueous bases, glycerinated gelatin, glycerin, then soap glycerin, polyethylene glycol, that is known also known as macrogol, then emulsifying bases, massa estronium, what if so, and masopol. Yes. You can see that we have the differentiations is there already there, what is already mentioned in the question that what are the different types suppository bases. So, we are using uh, massa sternum, white epsol and mesopole as the emulsifying bases as one of the bases for in case of suppositories, but we are not using that cocoa water in these in the classification we are not finding any such type of uh, suppository bases been used that is why the answer is. Uh, the cocoa butter has not been used. Yes, urethral suppository is also known as urethral through the urethral loop because some of the infections are there in case of urethra. So, that is why immediate modifications is needed and you see the structure of uh, means some of the suppository being used in the urethral meal, the size must be so minute and it is very much sophisticated way of preparation. So, that the suppositories or the medicament can be easily administered through the urethral route for the needful medication. You see, this is nothing but the bogies, urethral bogies is the answer, but let us see, yes, it is. 
then you see a little discussion about it again yes urethral suppositories are this you see urethral suppositories sometimes called as bogies uh, these are the pencil shaped and pointed at one extremity means suppose this is you see very fine like a pencil and pointed at one end so that it can be easily inserted by pushing whenever we will push it it can easily inserted into the rectum rectal you say sorry uh, uh, urethral root into the urethra you can if you will push it it can easily pass into the urethra for the local or systemic action some of the effects are there some of the diseases defects are there some of the issues might be there uh, in the urethral root so that has to be overcome by the use of this type of special kind of prepared uh, that is urethral bogies okay you see urethral suppository is intended for males who weigh about 4 gram very small amount weight each and 100 to 150 millimeter long and for females also we have 2 gram you see for male the gram is 4 gram urethral bogies and female also that is 2 gram and usually sub 60 to 75 millimeter in length depending upon the length so these are different type of urethral roots for urethral roots we have known as urethral bogies next question which of the following is not an advantage of suppositories yes which not avoids fast fast methodology yes it is advantage obviously you see already been discussed just right now previous slide yes what is the advantage Abort's fast metabolism because it's no, we are not taking or the medication is not taken orally. That's why yes, it is avoiding. Useful to promote evacuation of all. Yes, it is also. Melt at body temperature that has been discussed. Yes. Irritant drugs cannot be administered. Yes, here is the issue. Means which of the following is not an advantage? Yes, irritant drugs cannot be administered. You cannot administer. Because you are producing or providing the drug to specific orifices like uh, vagina, rectum, you see urethra, nasal and dental cones. So, different preparations are there, but you cannot put your product which is irritant in nature. Means suppose some of the drugs are irritant, uh, in that case capsule is the better option because you can put one uh, preparation return product in a capsule like this suppose you draw a little bit suppose this is a capsule and you kept this small capsule containing a return drug a return drug and put it another bigger size capsule you see what happened a small sized capsule containing return drugs are kept inside and larger capsule so that direct exposure of the drugs is not there with the body but you see in case of suppositories there is direct exposure the drug gets melted immediately in at body temperature means by that if the drug is irritant certainly it will produce lots of irritation the patient cannot tolerate he, he or she needs immediate medications so that's why such type of drugs is avoided in case of suppositories Yes, irritant drugs cannot be administered. Yes, because advantages you see, based on body temperature, it avoids fast fast metabolism, male cell body temperature, localized and systemic action. It can be given to unconscious patients. What are the advantages? Useful promote evacuation of bowel. These are the advantages, but irritant drug cannot be administered. That is one of the disadvantages. Apart from other disadvantages, like embarrassment to patients, because you see you have to push something uh, into the body or faces it might be painful also it will it will take a little bit time suppose you are uh, just pushing the product into the urethral as a, the urethral bog you can say rectum or vagina it will be painful the patient may not feel that much comfort zone so that's why it is very little bit harassment to the patient's needs to store at low temperature at minus temperature it will better then cost expensive because these are very sophisticated preparations as i told earlier uh, that's why these are product these preparations are prepared very minutely very carefully and not in a larger amount it's not being that prepared 
so that is why like tablets so that is why it is lot more costly it is costlier then uh, yes absorbing surface area of the rectum is much smaller than that of the small intestine yes what i have discussed that whenever putting the drug in oral route uh, you have a larger area of small intestine in the form of microvilli already discussed earlier so that is why that is a larger surface area by which the drug can be get absorbed but in the case of rectum you see the surface itself is very less so that is our absorption area when you are talking about absorption area although the you have put the product and the product gets melted okay very good for the local level or system reaction but it for absorption the rate uh, increased absorption it cannot be possible you cannot uh, expect that yes i am putting it immediately i will get action it will it will, it, it will take a little time and because absorption the area itself is very less also comparatively small intestine yes some drugs may be degraded by the microbial flora yes microbial flora some drugs may be degraded in the in the presence which are present uh, in the rectum because everybody body we have different type of microbes supportive microbes and non supportive harmful microbes the some of the microbes are present obviously in the rectum and whenever you are using that type of that is a, a rectal rectum so that supposedly in the rectum you are using bog is uh, that is the urethral bog is so what will happen mm, through the rectum if it is used uh, these are also known as uh, okay passage so you see microbial flora yes some of the microbes are there which might create a little bit uh, degradation of the product degradation by the microbial flora present in the rectum drug with narrow therapeutic margin cannot be used yes the drugs which are very quickly having very less half life and immediately gets degraded so those type of drugs cannot be changed, used in this case uh, okay next to that size of urethral suppository is for female and male female already discussed uh, 2 g and for male 4 g yes 2 or 4 g it has been mentioned earlier yes see you see rectal suppository is already been discussed earlier rectal suppository for adults it is 2 gram for children it is 1 gram and this is torpoid shaped torpoid shaped then vaginal suppository is also known as pessaries already discussed pessaries so vaginal tablets and these are available in uh, tablets and capsules so 3 to 5 gram conical shaped so that easily you can push it urethral suppository is also known as bogies the spelling is a little bit uh, B O U is to be there, bog is and male it is a 2 gram and female it is 2, it is male for 4 gram and female it is 2 gram. Length is 60 to 75 millimeter with pencil shaped so that easily it can be pushed. The nasal supposed stories is that also sometimes is known as nasal bogies. So its weight is 1 gram, length of 9 to 10 centimeter, and these are cylindrical preparations and ear cones, yes, ear cones so weight 1 gram with bullet shaped so various shapes as per the depending upon which uh, which area where we are administering these products depends upon our specific shapes specific sized because we are using in the suppose in the ear cones right here and we are thinking of using a pencil shaped it is not there we have to prepare such formulations which are can be easily fit to that particular part so that for the better and quicker action okay this next question which of the following method is simple and oldest method of preparation of suppositories yes hand molding method this is the oldest compression method is little bit modified power method, power molding method is also a old method but above all the hand molding method yes hand molding method because we have using uh, different operations we are rolling it just to see next slide you can understand very clearly yes we are rolling it by hand you can see i have let me discuss a little bit regarding it also you see you are just rolling it taking it you have to take the basis you have to add the drug roll it completely in hand and put it a small small size jaise hum log na aise aata banate hain ghar mein roti we are preparing rotis 
So all this like that. At ghar we have to, at home. What happened? We have to we have to mix it properly. Uh, we have mixed it thoroughly, and after that we are preparing our uh, all these breads. So that's why uh, like that procedure. Same procedure. You are uh, a little bit larger first of all. Now starkly you have to roll it properly. Take small small pieces and uh, make it angle. Old method. Now the, nowadays this type of method is completely vanished. You can say yes. This is the simplest and the oldest method of preparing a supper story. It is prepared by hand. By using hand, you are preparing. It is a time-consuming process. It is not the fastest process, and you cannot challenge or you cannot guarantee about the uniform size, uniform thickness, uniform weight, because everybody has their own way of preparing. Exactly size is there or little changes there. In that old method, it is cannot be ensured that. Cannot be guaranteed. Yes, by rolling the well-blended suppository base containing the active ingredients into the desired shape. Yes, you have to roll it properly. Already I discussed that you have to take the suppository bases. You have to take the medicament. You have to mix it properly, uniformly. Roll it properly to give a shape, and after that you have to cut it into small, small pieces as per the desired size, and then you have to finalize. You have to keep it dried, and after that you are you have to pack it somewhere. The base is first grated and then kneaded with the active ingredients by the use of mortar and pestle. Yes, you can. We are using mortar and pestle. We are. We can use instead of mortar and pestle also. We can use ointment slabs. There are slabs also there until the resultant mass is plastic and thoroughly blended. The active ingredient is usually finely powdered or dissolved in water. Sometimes mixed with a small amount of wool fat to help in cooperation with the suppository bases. Yes. So this process is very simple. Take the base, add the drug slowly in parts, and keep on rolling for a uniform mass. Once you get the uniform marks mass, then you just by rolling after rolling, you just uh, give a, a exact uh, as per the requirement a shape, and the shape will be there, and you just reuse it. So this is nothing. It's very simple method. Yes, the mass is then rolled into a cylindrical rod. Of desired length and diameter, and then push into the vaginal balls of the intended weight. Depend, it depends. What type of preparation you are looking for? Whether you are looking for any type of supper stories for urethra, urethra, urethral bogies, or you are using for any type of vaginal pessaries, or you are using for any type of rectum. Whether whether you are using any type of ear cones. So depending upon where you are implementing, what type of preparation you are looking for, what should be its weight, what should be its size, what should be its shape. So depending upon manual you are preparing. By hand rolling means manual you are preparing. There is no uh, instrument is there, no machinery is used, no semi-automatic, no automatic, but completely manual process you are preparing this one. Next to that, the amount of potassium hydroxide that would be uh, that would neutralize the acetic acid used to acylation acylate one gram of fat. Yes, let us see which the answer hydroxyl value. How hydroxyl value? Yes, you see, a specific explanation is also there. Yes, in case of for the determination of hydroxyl value, it is completely you have see. In order to be is an is that the number represent the milligrams of KOH required to neutralize the acetic acid used to acylate one gram of fat. Means for different value determination, sublimation value. Suppose you want to get the sublimation value, we want to know the acid value, we know the iodine value. So different type of specific definitions are there. We mentioned how you can calculate the value, sublimation value. How you can calculate? You can calculate the iodine value. How you can calculate the acid value? All for that getting the values. We have specific formula is there. A specific rule is there. How? The description is there. Yes. What is that? The number represents the milligram of KOH required. What is that? The hydroxyl value. What is hydroxyl value? Now this is the number represent the milligram of KOH required to neutralize one gram. Uh, Neutralize the acetic acid used to acetylate one gram of fat. For to get acetylate the one gram of fat, what is the requirement of KOH? How much amount of you are using KOH? Depending upon that, you can get the hydroxyl value. Yes. Next question. 
lesser than is used as the formulation of the substitute. What type of preparations we are using lecithin? Let us see D agglomerates. How and why? You see, various additives are used for increasing the viscosity. Hardening, where the viscosity means suppose some of the preparations there and you are using some viscosity modifiers. What is the role of viscosity modifier? It will modify or enhance the viscosity value. So, same way we have viscosity modifiers are there like beeswax, collateral silica that is the aerosol, then aluminum monosterate, polyvinyl pyrrolidone, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. We have different type of these are different type of poly must be used. What is the role? Viscosity modifiers. They will enhance the viscosity value of the formulation. Then we have D agglomerates. In that case, we are using lecithin. Uh, apart from that, drug solubility is there, enhancers are there, which will enhance the solubility rate of the product. Then absorption or polymerase and enhancers. What is that? Uh, they will observe. Means by that, whenever preparing any preparations, are we have to pass through the preparation to the stratum corneum or the screen. We need some permeations enhancers that promote the enhance permeation rate, the penetration rate of the drug, so that the drug can be easily get absorbed by the blood. So that's why we need some enhancers. For enhancers, we have fatty acids are there, surfactants are there. And for drug solubility enhancement, we have non-ionic surfactants used, but for D agglomerates are there like lecithin and other surfactants are used. So that's why as per the question is then concerned, previous question what is there? Lecithin is used as the formulation. Suppose to what type of formulation? That is D agglomerates. Yes, next question. Acid value of cocoa bottles is that. What is the acid value? Let us see. An empty 4. Why? The cocoa butter is the most widely used substitute basis. Yes, it is there. Its melting point lies between 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. Iodine value 34 to 38. Yes, acid value is not more than 4. It has been mentioned as the parameter, as a property of the cocoa butter. Because cocoa butter itself is the major suppository base used. In most of the preparations of suppositories, we are uh, abundantly, predominantly, we are using what we are using cocoa butter as the base. And the cocoa butter has its own specifications. What are they? Cocoa butter used why it is it with some specific melting point? What is the melting point? What is the melting point we are looking forward? Such melting point, such uh, polymers, or such bases we are using, which are neutral, inert in nature but has to be get released immediately at body temperature. At body temperature, specific uh, orifices where applying the supposed storage, it has to be get released right there immediately, gets melted. So, that is why it is uh, melting point is in between 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, iodine value in between 34 to 38, but the acid value is not more than 4. Okay? So, that is why as per the question is concerned in earlier you can see what is the acid value not more than not more than 4 getting it next question the bitter form crystallizes out the liquefied cocoa butter with stirring at which temperature let us see 28 to 31 degrees Celsius. any specification regarding it yes it is there also let us see what are these different polymorphs polymorph forms are there alpha beta G forms all these are different polymer forms with specification melting points is mentioned and a specific description is there. In different forms, different melting point at what melting point it gets melted, it has there. Yes, in case of beta form, it is mentioned, it is the melting point is 28 to 13 degrees Celsius, which crystallizes out the liquefied cocoa butter. Yes, what is its role? It crystallizes out the liquefied cocoa butter which stirring at 18 to 23 degrees Celsius. So, we get our answer that at what temperature, what is the question? The question was that, what was the previous question we asked? Yes, the beta form crystallizes out of the liquefied cocoa butter, which is steering at what rate? That is at 28 to 31 degrees Celsius. Getting it? Now, next and last question, which one of the following method is used to manufacture suppositories? Which method is used? 
for the manufacture of support stories compression method molding method support dissolution is not there sterilization is not there disinfection is not there only the answer is compression method yes it is compression molding method so you see let us have a little bit description regarding it also yes already different methods are there for the preparation of support stories hand molding that is already been discussed just a little bit earlier then compression molding power molding and automatic molding machine automatic means uh, machine is there automatically the process will go on power molding means a specific mold is there with different orifices sizes are there and the product in molten state it is again get into pour into it as for the name pour means you have to pour something where you have to pour into the molds a mold having six orifices a specific structured sizes is there six or twelve as for the size of the mold and you have to put your molten state the, of that product of a product into it and gets, it gets refrigerated and after some time one hour two hour you have to remove that mold i have to open the mold and slide very carefully you have to remove what you have to remove you have to remove the supposed to prepare supposed to this but before that you have to oil you have to oiling of their specific molds is needed because if you will not oil the site or the peripheral side outer cover of that outer shape of the uh, suppository will be uh, cut it or destroyed. So, so, by which what will that specific oiling is needed, lubricating is needed, okay. oiling is lubrication, proper lubrication of that mold is necessary. Once it will be lubricated, you can put your molten state product and you have to get refrigerated after some time you have to remove it and you have to open the mold and then carefully you have to remove the suppositories and especially and you have to kept it in proper aluminum foils uh, until it will get going to be used okay so this is a poor method but compression method yes what is the method let us see elegant suppository can be made by compression the cold grated mask into the desired shape it is simple and more elegant appearance than hand molding obviously hand molding and though it is by using by hand everybody has their own way but exact shape i have already discussed exact shape exact weight you cannot finalize that which is the best step is everybody cannot give a uniform step that is the reason the uh, problem is there it avoids the possibility of sedimentation of the insoluble solids in the suppository base so this is one of the compression the product has to be compressed enough and then put into the mold and it will give a better look as compared to your hand molding it is much more better as compared to hand molding process hand molding process is the old method of molding process and the nowadays these preparations are outdated so nowadays compression method and pore method is we in labs also we are going adopting that pore molding method which gives a very good shaped uh, suppositories we can get a better support storage by using pore method automatic method nowadays it is very much by a specific time period you have to put everything in command and you can press and you can get the best output within a short span of time much more better yielding uniformity stability everything will be there in case of automatic molding machines okay thank you very much for observing